This was about uh, maybe seven o'clock in the morning when I got up. And Dad said, or my brother phoned me from his farm. He told me, you better swath all that canola down before it freezes up. So that's what I did. I went out to cut the canola. I went to the east end of the field because the field was opened up the night before. There was rounds made around the field, but this was, I had to go to the east end and finish that little corner off. So on the way down, I cut the field in half and went right down the center where that big slough is sitting there. And coming upon the slough, I come across these dome-shaped objects in the field. And I didn't know what the hell they were, but uh, uh, somebody told me that uh, American hunters use these for hunting geese. So I never thought too much of it. Driving to, the, driving to the slough with the swather, so I got a little closer and I stopped because everything was moving. I thought, well, gee, goose blinds don't move, they sit still. So I thought to myself, well, I might as well get off to see what this contraption is. So I got off on the latter side of the swather and I walked towards him and I stopped about roughly 15 feet away from the object because I could see right underneath through it to the bottom. The grass was moving. And I thought to myself, what the devil is that contraption anyway? Because they weren't on the ground, they were off the ground. They were about a foot off the ground. And they were sitting there going around the circle. They weren't standing stationary. I thought the machine was stationary and it wasn't. It was going counterclockwise. The grass was going one way and the machine was going the other way. So I walked a little closer I wanted to really see what it was, but it was moving. An instinct told me to back up. So uh, I backed up to, to stay, stand about at least 15 feet away from him. And I thought to myself, well, that's kind of odd. It's going the opposite way. It's going counterclockwise. It's not going clockwise. It's going counterclockwise. Grass was moving one way and the machine was going the other way. And I thought, well, that's kind of weird. I thought, well, I wonder who the hell it is. Some joker probably playing a trick on me. And I was going to walk a little closer. Instinct told me to keep my distance. So I kept my distance and I walked around and looked at it. What the devil is another one on the other side? There were three in a row. One on the south side, about maybe 100 feet away. Another one on the north side, 100 feet away. And there were three in the center. All five machines, there was two on the end there, the two little ones were guarding the three big ones in the center. And it was sitting in a half moon shape. They were sitting like this, all in a circle, half moon position. The others were sitting here. They were sitting here and I was here. Coming down to turn around, I was about 15 feet away. I know you've answered this question a million times, <laughs> but it wasn't natural. It was a machine. These were, these were machines. Machine. It was a machine. Yeah. It was natural. It was metal. You could tell it was metal. Mm -hmm. and so, I, I wanted to go up to them and feel them, but Instinct told me to keep my distance. Now you tell me, how in the hell they didn't land on the crop and they didn't land on the water? And right Beside the crop, they didn't hit the crop numbers all the way around the field. There was one there, one this side, and three here. They never hit the sloop, they hit the outline of the whole sloop. The bigger ones were about 30 feet in diameter. They had a lip on them, like a bumper all the way around. And it was gray. Very hot at one time. When the metal is, was hot, and when it cools off, it gets gray. And that's just the ring on that machine was gray. I'd say it was maybe about that far away from the dome because it was about that thick. Mm -hmm. And it was all the way around the bottom. And why was that end of the dome only gray and not the top end? I, I couldn't figure that one out. The rest of the machine was a shiny silver. Like, like chrome. Stainless. Yeah. Like, I'd say they were stainless steel because it was a brushed, uh, looked like, like a brushed aluminum. That's what it looked like. And uh, you could tell there was rivets all around because when it was turning, you could see these little bumps going around once in a while. If you'd blink, you could see the bumps. Because you watch something in a, in a fan, you look at a fan and you blink, you could make out the whole stripping of the fan. And when you're standing there watching with your eyes open and you go, don't blink, 
you can't make out what that looks like. You blink, you can make exactly what that fan looks like. It's uh, it's it's like this, straight across. But it's this is the dome of it, right here. So it was sectional like that? Yeah, oh yeah. It was because you could tell the lip on this side was uh, hot at one time. And up here there was just like rivets going around it all the way around. All you could tell there was some compartments but you couldn't make out what they were and now you know you blink and you could see rivets uh, they were round they were had round tops on them and they were they were going around there was some in the top some in the center some in the bottom the outside dome was chrome and that uh, foot thing was gray and the bottom machine had four pipes and they were huge they weren't small they were all in around the outside and that's what i think made that impression in the ground because it was turning I said, the machine is brushed stainless steel. That's what it looks like. And I said, it's as shiny as could be. And I said, that bottom lip is about a foot wide, and it is not shiny. It looked like it was hot at one time. What I couldn't figure out, why they were so close together. You couldn't get your hand between the two of them. But when you notice this, you know, I was standing there, and I was dumbfounded. I didn't know what the hell was going on. Your mind is trying to get this thing all unraveled, but it doesn't unravel. God, I was scared. I was just th thinking to myself, they just come towards me. I'm history. And there was there was five of them, and there was only one of me. And gee whiz, you started to think, I, I was scared stiff. I didn't know what to do. You know, if somebody would have just clapped your hands, I think it would drop dead right there. <laughs> I was so scared. But you know, it, it's mind-boggling the way it works. It's really mind-boggling. So uh, instinct told me when I walked up to the machine to back up, because uh, have you ever had instinct tell you this? You walk up to the back end of a combine and there's something turning, and instinct will tell you to back up right away. It won't let you get closer or touch something that is turning. You stick your hand into a fan, would you? Instinct will tell you to keep your distance. That's what it'll tell you right away. And uh, a lot of guys says, well, how could you tell that? I said that had something in the back of my head was telling me, keep my distance, stay back, dangerous. So you keep your distance. And it was cold. It was, I had a parka on that day, gloves on, caps with flaps down, and it was so cold, I was shaking. And then you get towards this goddamn machine that's standing there, you could, I, I was just gritting my teeth. What the devil could that damn thing be? And it's not a goose boy, because I know what they look like. And I said, well, this damn sucker's turning. Why would it be turning? Did you hear anything? No, like no sound. No sound. No sound. All I could hear was the swaths running. And that, when you walk up to something, your mind goes blank. Because mm -hmm. you're, you're so scared that everything seems to... I had this uh, echoing sound in my ears. And I thought, well, the swaths ain't running anymore. What the hell? And it, it disappears out of your mind. Your mind is like a picture. It just stops. And I thought to myself, now what the devil? So I thought, you know, you got all kinds of things going through your head and you're standing there and thinking and thinking. And then all of a sudden your mind tells you, you better back up and go to that swath and get back on and get the H out of here. And I thought to myself, well, I better get on the swath. I <laughs> backed up all the way to the swath backwards. I didn't take my eyes off the object. And I got on, on the wheel side of the swath. And you think the swather would move? Engine was dead. Because when I got off, the engine was running. It wouldn't start, the uh, ignition was dead. Mm. It was completely dead. And the engine was running when I got off of it. Because mm. the ignition key was turned over to the side. And uh, I tried it and I tried it and it just would not start. So I'm sitting there waiting, you know, thinking what the hell to do. What are you going to do when that damn thing comes towards you? I'm telling you, I was so scared, I didn't know. The, the, the whites, I could imagine my gloves, the whites, you could see on your knuckles, because I was sitting there just gritting my teeth, trying to move, and I couldn't. So it was cold, and I was sitting there, I don't know how long I sat on that spot. I, was, uh, I thought to myself, well, the gate is closed over there. How the hell if I ever get this contraption started, I ain't going to stop, I'm going to go straight through that gate, and I'm not getting off. And it wouldn't move. It just would not move. It was frozen. Like somebody just froze it to the ground. It would not, the engine wouldn't go. 
So I sat there maybe, I don't know, half an hour, maybe an hour, and all of a sudden the sucker started to lift off the ground. Now they were going up slowly in a step formation. The big one, like the three big ones in the center took off first, and then the little ones followed. And they were just right over top of my head. And I thought to myself, well now what the hell am I going to do? You look up, what the hell, now they're over top of my head, and that's going on in your mind. And you look up, and I said, no, they're too damn close. They're closer now than they were before. And you could see the whole bottom of that machine. Boy, what an outfit that's. I wonder who the hell makes that. That's the one right there. But the dome could be a little more pointed. You know, it was... So there, there wasn't... Was there an opening on the body? On the bottom it was open. It was a... Uh, like a vent. Like vents. There was about four of them. Here there was uh, one uh, one in that corner, one in this corner, one over there, and one over here. There was four of them. That's all I remember. But they were huge. Now, they weren't small pipes. To me it looked like it was their way of maneuvering the machine, moving it. But when they were above my head, I couldn't figure this out. They were straight down. Mm -hmm. And how the hell did they get from that slough over my head? I was 15 feet away, so they had to move over. So what drove them over sideways? And uh, you try to figure this all out. It doesn't make sense. And uh, then I thought to myself, maybe those pipes, they moved or something, you know, at an angle to get the machine to move over. The pattern was like... Uh, like can you draw the underside of those well, things? The underside was... Well, let's say a round circle like this, and it was round deals like this all the way around. There were portholes, actually. And uh, when you look underneath them, there was more than four. Because when they looked at from the side of it, it looked like there was four. But there's more. There's, uh, I can't remember, now is it six or seven? There was a pile of men away. But they all turned according to what that looked like when you look from the bottom up. Mm -hmm. And you know how the machine looked like in the bottom? It was like yeah, molded. Uh, you couldn't tell if there was bolts or whatever underneath. It wasn't. But it was like that all the way around. And they were on the outside only. So the center had a big circle. That's all it had. And there was nothing out of there. But uh, I could still see that as plain as day. I have uh, nightmares about this bottom part. And then I thought, well, I better see if that swatch is going to start. Still wouldn't start. Everything was dead. So I sat there some more, and they were sitting on one spot. They were just hovering there on one spot, over the top of my head. And, and the crop, it was flattened right out. You know, there was crop on either side of me. And it was fl the pressure from the objects that were these machines running. You couldn't tell what the hell it was. It was just, uh, all you could see was like when they got higher up, it was like a vapor. Like you see behind a, a jet plane, a vapor, but you couldn't see it that clear. It was more like a fog, you know, it was thinner. Do you think that was just the air or was that something that the vehicle was pumping out? Well, it came out of the ports, you know, it came out of these ports, the vapor. It, uh, it was actually going down as the thing rose up, it was pushing this vapor down. But uh, and did it look? I couldn't feel anything. That's what I I couldn't figure out. Did it look like smog? Did it look? Well, yeah, something like it. Uh, blue but you know gray how it, or how when it hits the ground, it sort yeah. of flares out. Yeah. That's what it was doing. But you couldn't feel anything. And uh, you held your hands out like this, but you couldn't feel nothing. And I thought to myself, what the devil is that contraption? I still didn't know about these UFOs. I never even took a thought it was a UFO. But uh, sitting there, sitting there waiting, and all of a sudden they started to go slowly. And they just took off as a flat. They were gone. And they went to the northeast end of the sky. Man, mm -hmm. when they took off, you'd have blinked, you'd have missed them. I was holding on to that swather for dear life. See, it wouldn't have got me off there for no money. <laughs> but I had to take the swather up too. See, the, the crop was flat. Why was the crop flat? It was standing up. Mm -hmm. well, as soon as they were about the crop come up, what was pushing the crop down? What well, I don't get because I couldn't feel anything. No wind, but yet the crop was still down. They were gone in just a week of them. You, you wait them, you would have missed them. So then the swaths started. And I thought, thank God. 
it took off and I didn't stop. <laughs> I went straight for the house. And my mother said, well, what the devil took you so long? Dinner time's at 12 o'clock, you know. And I didn't know how to tell her this. Well, I said I was sort of watching something in the in a slough, not too far from the house. And Dad was reading the newspaper at the other end of the room. We had the house was uh, there was a breakfast nook on the far end, and that's where he was sitting reading the newspaper. And he looks at me and says, "What was it?" Well, you know, I sort of didn't want to tell him. I was sort of nervous, and then I told him. Yeah, I said it was some kind of an object from uh, I don't know where, but they're not there no more. Well, what happened to them? I said, they took off. Well, where did they go? I said, how the hell would I know? They went straight up. That's all I know. And he says to me, where are the flying saucers? What's a flying saucer? I didn't know what the heck that was. He read it in the German paper years ago that these objects were flying around in, in, in Canada and foreign countries. And he told me about, can you go and look? I says, I don't care, go and look. And mom was at the telephone. She had phoned my sister, they were going to butcher an animal the next day. The first I heard about is when my mother called. Ruth, something, something terrible happened. I says, what do you mean? Well, she says, Edwin was home for lunch and he, he didn't look very good. And he said he saw these, these uh, circles in the, or these, these uh, things, they were like flying saucers, and he, he showed with his hands, you know, how they were shaped and that. And he said there were five of them, and and, uh, and then, of course, my dad didn't believe him. He says, oh, come on. And he says, yes, and he, he couldn't eat his lunch. And uh, so then, uh, yeah, and then he, this is what my mother was telling me, and she was all, she didn't know what to say. And, uh, well, I says, I don't know what you're talking about. You know, it just didn't make sense to me. She says he, he saw something out there and, and he was really scared. Oh. I think it scared him half to death. And I says, well, what was it? And she says, I don't know. She says, it, it, uh, if it was a plane, it wasn't a plane. I says, well, was it an airplane? Maybe she said no. And Ron Moyer happened to be over there at the house in the town here. And he, she says to my sister, a helicopter had landed in the slough. And I was hollering from the table. I said, no, it wasn't no helicopter. And, uh, well, you know how older people are. They don't pay attention to what you're saying. So Ron Moyer, he was out there and then about a half an hour later, out at the farm. <laughs> and he says to Dad, let's go out to the saloon and have a look and see what there really was out there. And they went and I went and took the swather and the swather sang by the house. And I drove out where I left off and I went back and forth. They were crawling around in that slough all day long. And I stopped the swather and I asked him, I said, what are you guys looking for here anyway? Well, you never know. They could have dropped the pen. I says, how do you know they had one? Were you able to figure out if he was just farting around? If it was just No, he wasn't farting around. I never disbelieved him. All was unexplainable, you know. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the facts were what they were. The pictures, the, the grass, uh, all of that is, you know, it's all what it was and for me to say uh you know to solve that and say yeah it was definitely this i couldn't do that you know all you could see in the slough was like a tripod like you got here the marks were in the slough in the grass and all you could see was these marks and like somebody was walking around a tripod step going into that object but they were there was tracks all around the machine there was footprints around that Space craft, but you know they're not footprints. They're just you know yeah, marks in the grass. That's all it is, and that was high grass. And which one of these had the uh, tracks around it? The stomping. This, right, this one here, the front one. That was sitting on that side had uh, the tripod uh, track on it, like the door uh, actually opened on it. So that machine was had to be sitting stationary to open. Okay, so it it had stopped spinning, and there yeah. was there was something triangular. Yeah, sitting there. Right there. Mm-hmm. Huh. And they can't explain this to me. And the scientists, they checked that all out and they don't know. All they know is they said it was a door that was opened on the side of the spacecraft. Because it was a tripod. They had three, the front leg was here, and the two on this side, and it was open. Those tripods in, uh, sitting right there.
was open. So uh, you could see there was something was out because the grass was bent down. Uh -huh. and, 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 and they and they, they walked around? Yeah. Just around here? Just around the front part. There was noise else. The grass was all standing up on that side. Uh -huh. Just on this one side over here. There was about 30 feet across the middle. They were big, huge. Oh. And there were three of them sitting like they looked like one machine because they were bumped together so close. And I said, well, how did... Because the center on Myers, what do you think that really was? Devil only knows, that's all I kept saying. I said, I don't know, why are you saying a devil only knows? Well, he says, where were they from? I says, gosh, don't ask me. I didn't stop to ask him. I didn't even get close enough to him. Because I instinct told him to keep my distance. He says, what do you think it is? I says, I don't know what it is. Why are you asking me this? I'm asking you. You're the cop. You're supposed to be investigating this. And he says, well, I can tell you what they were, but you won't believe me. Well, I says, I have to. I says, I'm the only guy that's seen them. You never seen them. I seen them live. You know, the machine was work, turning and everything. But they're not here now. But I says, you may be watching them in the sky because they flew uh, northeast. Whatever he saw was there, and uh, they came from above, and they left via the same road. He saw something. And I said to the RCMP, I says, you know, uh, in the northeast of the sky, there is red lights, red, orange, yellow, green, all kinds of colors of lights, and they're not sitting still, moving back and forth. He says, what do you think they are? I says, I don't know, I'm asking you that. You're the policeman. Well, he says, why are you asking me? I don't know that either. He says, I'm asking you what they are. I says, I haven't got a clue. And my dad told him, he says, they're unidentified flying objects. And uh, this went on, you know, for maybe five, ten minutes. And I had just told him, I says, I can't sit here and talk. I have to take off and swath this field. And I got to get it swathed by the day's over. And it was 190 acres there. And so I got that field swathed. Uh, Ron Moyer says, now what the devil are we going to do? He says, don't look at me. I can't do nothing. I says, well, isn't the RCMP supposed to do something? Fence this place off? How do you know it's not radioactive? Oh, he says, I never thought of that. And it was. We had a guy out from Winnipeg, Manitoba. He said, guy, you're gone. It was radioactive bad. It just, that radio, that machine just rattled when it went into the red. You should have seen the faces of some of those policemen. And they were walking around in those spots. And then those other cover RCMP from Regina came out with German Shepherd dogs. They would not go into those circles. They wouldn't go near. You couldn't get those dogs to go in that circle for no money. I had a little, little mongrel dog. He wouldn't go close to the slough. The cattle wouldn't go close to it. And people were walking around in there. What I don't get is how they knew the difference between the water and the land. They didn't land in the water. And the water was two feet from the edge of the slough. They didn't land in the crop. You tell me, how did they know the difference? See, the crop on the east side of the field wasn't sown right against the slough. There was a, a blank spot in between. And that's where the grass had grown up, and it was four feet high in there. And I said to a lot of guys, and I said, how the hell did they know the difference between water and land? No, you're up that high, you come down. How the hell did they know where to land? But they, I guess they did. They never landed in the water, weren't even close to it. And I said that to the RCMP. Lots of guys would stand there and scratch their head. They didn't know what they had to answer. I said, well, they didn't land in the crop. And they didn't land in the goddamn uh, slough in the water. How they could tell the difference between the crop and the slough? The canola, there was a canola field right beside. Did not land in the canola. Till right beside it, but not in it. You lie in bed, and you think about this. You close your eyes, you can see the whole thing in front of you. And it's... I don't know. It's branded into my fingers and uh, all over. It's, it's a lot of people says, well, how can you keep thinking about it? I says, once in a while you do. You sit down and you just think about it. How the hell did they get down here? And we're trying to get where they are. We'll never get there where they are. You can't plan an outing just to see these machines. You've got to end up seeing them by accident.
like I did. Well, by accident. What do you mean by accident? Well, I was swathing here, and I come along, it's going to turn the swath around and end the fetal nerve sitting there. It's sitting right in my path. How can I turn around? Is this all true? Well, I said, if it's a lie, I said, you can expect to see something else coming up if it's a lie. And, uh, and they, they said, if, uh, if it's a lie, you'll have to call the RCMP liars then. Oh, the RCMP is involved. I just I said, you better believe it. I said, there's not just me, there's United States. The Air Force come flying in with six planes, aircrafts, which flew over the slow from every angle taking pictures. And I says, well, the Canadian Air Force was in there. The Navy was in there. The Army was in there. Now, well, who are you going to call liars here? Do you think it was a lie? I don't think so. Because this is your eyes don't deceive you now. That's what I saw. I saw. What, you, don't, you don't have to believe me. I don't care what you believe. But what I saw was real. I says, when you were sitting on a swather and it does not move off the spot, there's something got to be haywire here. I wouldn't want to go through it again, never again. Because uh, your bones, they ache like you had electrical shock. My joints, I couldn't move hardly. For about two weeks, it bothered me. What I've shared with you here is just a small sliver of a large body of information that I have. I haven't talked about the, the science the radioactivity of the site, the uh, craziness of humanity that surrounded the farm, and Edwin uh, in the years after he, he is, his story went public. I talked to Edwin's entire family. They all confirmed that his story is true and he wouldn't lie about what happened that day. I also talked to a constable, retired constable Ron Moyer who was the initial reporter on the event. Even if you discount everything he said, that still doesn't explain what happened in 1989 when the objects returned, this time hovering over an elementary school. The children who were out for recess and the teacher who witnessed it reported that the objects were exactly as Edwin had described, only they were shining brightly.